and hello everyone welcome back to another flask tutorial so in the previous tutorial we took a look at working with cookies storage we can use on the user's browser in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at error handling such as showing the user a 404 page in case they need to be shown that this page does not exist. All right, so let's get started. First, let's create another template. We can call it 404.html, meaning not found. 404 does mean not found. To give you an example, and I'll probably leave a link to this in the description. If I don't, I recommend someone just leaves a comment to notify me that I did not leave a link for this in the description and I'll update the description. Right here, developer mozilla.org and in HTTP sta states, so statuses. Then you'll notice we have a lot of codes here. Generally, I never work with anything in a 100 range or in a 300 range, mostly in a 200, 400, 500 range. 200 is like success, so yes, this was a good response, whatnot. This is what you would generally get if you query an endpoint such as slash admin and that endpoint does exist and you can go there it will return to 200 because that was a successful response then you have things like client side errors so it's if if it's an error on the client side that is so it's not something that the server is having a problem with with the server let's say i'm trying to access something in the database then that would be a server side problem because i can't access something in the database However, let's say you don't have access to this page, then it's a client side error because that's a client issue. And in this case, we get to client error responses. We have bad request, unauthorized, payment required, forbidden, and in here, not found. This is if this page or something could not be found. All right. So now that we know that, let me just move that out of the way. And here we can just create a basic HTML page. Just ignore all of this boilerplate here. You don't need any of this. It is just what my code editor auto completes for me. And here we can just say h1, the page you were looking for was not found. And here we can just go not found. Ooh -woo. All right. Now we have a basic 404 page, which the user would be redirected to if they try and access a page that does not exist. So let's say we have one page and this is just slash admin. This slash admin page is for admins. So let's go here and say admin. And we can just say print. This will never execute. Okay. And here we can say abort and it's abort. We can just say whatever code we are going to throw. We can say 401, like not authorized. You're not authorized to go to slash admin. You are not an admin. You are a user. You're not authorized. And of course, abort comes from OS. So from OS import abort. And this is just an example. So this would be a 401 error, not a 404, which we'll get to in a second, but a 401 error. So we say, if we run our Flask app, and then we open it up. Okay, now here we get a not found page. This is by default what you'll get in Flask if you try and go to a page that is not found. We have created our own, but we'll show how to do that in a second. Now if I go to slash admin, you'll actually see we get a type error. Since abort does not seem to take in any arguments. Cool. Now let's handle some errors. At app dot error handler. So you're creating your own error handler that you want to work with here. On a 404 page, if you get an error 404, then you know what you're in for. This is not found. We can then define a not found error function. And it will take an E. And E returns the error information. We can actually print E here so we can just see what it is and in here we can just return 
render template 404.html. And here we can also specify a value you want to return, so 404. This is an optional value, but you could do this if you want to. In a sense, you could also maybe return a 401 here. Not sure if that will work, but we can try it. Then here with Flask, we can just import render template. And you know what? This abort here, I think it should actually come from Flask. Ah, uh, yes. My bad. I've been coding too much normal Python, it seems. Now, if we use abort, not from OS, but from Flask, and we say 401, then this will never be reached. Okay, now we have two examples, a 404 page example and a 401. When we go here and we refresh, okay, it still says it cannot be reached. Uh, actually, that might be because our app might not be running anymore because we aborted with, yes, OS. Okay, then the board with OS, that will kill your app. Now, if we refresh it, we get unauthorized because it's a 401 unauthorized. Okay, now let's go to a page that does not exist. Let's say, bang. Now we get a not found page, which is not found. This page you were looking for was not found, and this is the one we created. Now what if we aborted this here, this admin page with a 404 instead? Well, that means if we go here, we go admin, then it will redirect us to this page here because it was not found. But of course, if we change this to, let's say, a 403, which is a forbidden error code, refresh, it says forbidden. And that is basic error handling. You just say what you want to error handle the error with, so error handler and in 404 or 401 or 500 or whatnot, and then you give a function that should execute when this runs. And this is how you can throw an error. Of course, you do have your Python errors that you can use to so try try something if an error is thrown, do something else, but this is more Flask-like for specific routes. And that's the basics of error handling in Flask. It's very simple. All there is to it is you say what error you want to handle here, and if an error is thrown on a specific page, this will automatically detect it and return what's happening here. You should still use normal Python error handling as well. This isn't the end all be all. Normal Python error handling is for 500 errors generally. So if you have an internal server error, then having a Python function to, or Python try catch block to make sure that that error runs correctly if an error is thrown would be the best way to go about it and not to use this. This here is based for client side errors. So 400 errors. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all again in the next Flask tutorial.